The net zero challenge has been a major talking point for the World Economic Forum lately. Four years after the world leaders met in Paris to agree on the Paris Climate Agreement, the annual meeting for the World Economic Forum is making it a priority to tackle climate change. The purpose of the Net Zero Challenge is to turn the trajectory of greenhouse gas emissions to ensure that global warming stays within safe limits. But how do they intend to do that? Well, I'm Lewis from The Thinking Bubble and today we're talking about the Net Zero Challenge. Now, judging from the title, it sounds quite snazzy, playful, catchy. It sounds something like would be in your video game achievement for failing to catch a fish. But unfortunately, it's quite serious. Now, when the world leaders met in Paris to agree to limit the global temperature by the end of the century to well below 2 degrees Celsius and make an effort into limiting the temperature increase to a further 1.5 Celsius, however, emissions have continued to rise at 1.5% per annum, therefore a massive deduction in 3-6% to per annum between today and 2030 is needed to limit global warming by 1.5 to 2 degrees. Why has progress on climate action been limited? Well, while 121 countries have committed to being carbon neutral by 2050, they actually only account for less than 25% of the emissions. None of these countries are among the top five emitters, and in addition, only a few, despite the commitment, have actually enacted policies in an attempt to produce the desired effects. On the corporate side, only a minor minority of companies disclose their emissions. Even fewer actually have emission targets or are in the process in making reductions in line with the Paris Agreement trajectory. Public pressure and global activism has surged in recent years, especially amongst youth and Western countries. However, public education on the threat of climate change and related climate action is still insufficient to make this a global phenomenon. As progress within these international negotiations have been quite disappointing, corporations and governments need to move unilaterally. The world needs swift global policy action. However, reality is often disappointing as global consensus will very likely not establish soon enough to counter the crisis. These individual governments and corporations can and should move ahead with unilateral initiatives such as realizing savings from efficiency improvements, managing risks, pursuing new opportunities and maintaining long-term license to operate. A part of the net zero proposals is that corporations can accelerate individual action and commit to meaningful short and long-term reductions. Within all sectors can do more to reduce the emissions intensity of their business and supply chains through measures that cost them very little or nothing. All corporations should actively monitor and manage their climate related risk to increase their efforts to achieve a reduction of 1.5 to 2 degrees. An example of this is internal carbon pricing, anticipating a future with stringent policies and greater societal mobilization. Most of these corporations can develop new business models that contribute to achieving low carbon economy and capitalize on new value pools for green products and services. The investor action can also enable transparency and support long-term decarbonizational plans. Investors can coordinate to define and apply standards for disclosure and reporting. These such efforts can encourage companies to address their climate related issues. And more importantly, investors can increase their scrutiny on their climate risks and encourage asset members to set long term targets and strategies towards net zero emissions. Governments can introduce national regulation and that will reduce emissions immediately. Many countries will actually benefit economically from carbon abatement investments. They would need to enact ambitious policy frameworks that would include a meaningful price on greenhouse gas emissions. However, while the carbon pricing is regarded as effective, it is quite unlikely to be sufficient. For one thing, these costs will differ widely across sectors, which then implies that carbon prices incentivize some sectors to move earlier than others. Alongside carbon pricing, sector-specific regulations and incentives will provide remedies such as a switch from fossil fuels to renewable energies, electric mobility, efficiency, green building standards supported by accelerated innovation. As long as the world as a whole is moving slowly, national efforts will also require measures to protect emission intensive industries from high carbon low cost competition. 
through mechanisms like cross-border carbon taxes and low carbon product standards. Individuals like us need to drive climate action in their role as consumers, voters, leaders and activists. The transition to a net zero economy will be a shift for all of society. Individuals have to take the lead in inciting governments, businesses and every part of society to move. Conclusively, the world is at a crossroads. The world must fast forward to decisive and cohesive action. The next decade will determine whether humanity has a fighting chance to limit global warming. The technologies of low carbon transformation are largely available. The barriers of, to action are vastly overstated and the consequences are well known. Climate action is perceived as a cost or a trade-off with other priorities, but it should be viewed as an opportunity for businesses, countries and even individuals to create an advantage in building a better, more sustainable world.